What is up, Responsible Day Traders? Today is Sunday, December 4th, 2022. I am Lindsay Duff, and this is Responsible Day Trading. Okay, so we had a really interesting week last week. We did see a really, really big drop that happened, uh, I believe it was Friday morning, and but we do see this moving to the upside in a way that's really interesting to watch. Now, the new bar that's forming, I'm gonna be really interested to see what's happening happening with it, but last week it closed all the way at the high of the bar and we pulled away from the EMAs. And we're gonna look at that because that is a really, really interesting thing to look at there. We have um, some potential for this to move to the upside. And I am really, I think that the optimist in me always expects it to go up. I find that I do better on my long trades than I do my short trades typically, just because um, the pullbacks into the area are so great for areas to move up. And not only did we separate from the EMAs, which we'll see in just a minute, but we also separated again and closed back above it without any divergence. So that's a pretty decent sign. We're still gonna have to read what it's telling us, but we're gonna see what we got going on. Guys, don't forget that this month, the entire month of December, we are going to have a 40% discount for you profit trader. So make sure you check that out. You can head on over there or use a discount that we've got up above and save yourself the trouble of funding your own account and use ours. So, all right guys, let's go ahead, check out the news and then we're gonna check out the market. All right, guys, so we are going to head on over to news. Then we're going to look at market news and let's see what we got going on this week. Uh, looks pretty light. OK, so Monday we do have 30 minutes after market opens. We have some high impact news. Tuesday we have it at 11 o'clock. It's not a typical time, but just being aware of those things is usually what's best. Wednesday, an hour after market opens and Thursday and Friday, it's an hour before for market opens. We got some pre-market going on there, uh, but for the most part, it's gonna, probably gonna be a pretty light week. I mean, we're gonna be seeing a lot less movement going on as we're reaching closer to the end of the year. So let's go ahead, look at this market, see what we got going on. All right, so this is our daily chart and you can see what happened in these bars here there's been a lot of movement there has been opportunity so don't get me wrong even though it's moving slow the opportunity is still there so the first thing we see is we did pull away from the emas here we pulled right back into them macd's never crossed that bottom bollinger band we have pulled away here again now we have closed above this previous area, which is what we really look for. We look for that close above and the pull away. And technically, we don't have any divergence here. Now, the reason I say technically is this. We really want to see these BBs showing strength and pushing up higher like they do here to really feel comfortable with that move up. So we got this tiny little reversal bar. It's a little bit of a flag. And the close from Friday is actually just a little bit lower than that. Now, this pullback here is pretty significant with the close up at the top. And the BB did remain blue at that time, so it's not a bad sign. Now, something that we want to be aware of, though, is we've created a support space here. So we've got this long, long bar. We're going to have to see what this next bar does. Is it this BB going to stay purple and roll inside? And we're going to finally start breaking back below the Bollinger Bands and pushing down. For me, I really want to see it breaking back below the Bollinger Bands, pushing down, showing the ability to break through the zero line like we see with the MACDs here with the strength and the distance between them. We don't see any strength in either direction at this moment. And we're technically still at that area that's just been holding, 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 holding every time we pulled up to touch it. So just being aware of that, being cautious, that's what we always talk about, just being aware and being cautious and knowing what we're looking for. So like I said, if this purple BB starts really dipping down inside and showing us the ability to cross that bottom Bollinger Band, which those Bollinger Bands are tight and they're close together. And when they're close together, it's easy to pop below and above. Uh, so we just want to keep that in mind. So we're going to really see where these closes continue to uh, 
place themselves throughout the week and see what we're looking for in that manner. But let's go ahead and look at the 28657, which we've got right here. So the 28657, we had the really, really white BBs. We pulled back into the areas. And then this is what we saw on Friday. I came in and looked at this on Friday. I was like, wow, that was a giant drop that happened uh, in the pre-market information. And so it did end up pushing back up from that. And because that big bar was pre-market, it was a little bit of an expectation. Still being cautious as we're reaching these areas and you can see it struggled a little bit to go through them, but did break through and come back above. Now, I do wanna come back and um, talk about what we talked about last Sunday in these areas that were potential areas to create a bounce. And what did end up happening is those areas held up a little bit, but we can see it came right back to this main area of support that happened back here. And I actually just drew this line in um, because there was a lot of space between the support and the resistance here. There was something like, you know, 40 points. And typically anywhere between 10 and 20 points is a little bit more um, viable where we can see those bounces happening. They tend to happen every, you know, uh, no less than eight, but usually about 10 points apart. So it did pull down here, give a nice little W pivot and just held off there. So it just kept pushing down and pushing down and just came back down, gave a W pivot, MACDs were leading a lot higher and boom, that thing shot up to the upside. Now, even with this strong pullback that happened here and this one giant bar, I don't like to call this a strong pullback because it was just one big bar and one big bar can be deceiving. You know, if we just have one or two strong bars, that does not equal a strong move. So you can get yourself wrapped up in seeing, oh man, we've got these two strong bars. It's got to go up as soon as it pulls back. But those were just two strong bars in a move. We want to see more of something like this happening with the strength just continuing up, the length happening, the closes happening above one another to really show us strength. And this was just one bar. So this is a place where people can get themselves turned around and thinking that, you know, this is absolutely we're going down once we pull back here. No, no, it was just one big strong bar that pushed us down there. Now, let's talk about areas that could possibly create a bounce to the upside from this perspective, now that we're back above the EMAs again and possibly looking for the long pivot. Now, right now, it's pulled down to the area where it reached previously, but the MACDs are turning purple. They're really attempting to roll in. So we may see it come down just a little bit further down to this area of support, um, you know, before it pushes back up, if it's going to. I mean, currently the MACDs are leading a lot lower than they were previously, but that's not a bad thing. Sometimes this happens where they just pick up the steam and roll and push back up. So if it does pull back here, we're gonna expect to, and we expect it to push up. If it pulls back there and we're still expecting it to push up, then we're gonna wanna see this roll in lightly, either hit that bottom Bollinger Band or the zero line and start to roll back up. Now, what we would like to see is possibly divergence and double white pivots in order to say this is gonna really, really push back down. But we do have a couple of areas of support that we can pay attention to. And we've got this down here and I'm gonna draw a bit of a bigger box because we have this area and we have this area. If these, if this price action starts pulling back, these EMAs are gonna start acting accordingly, which means they'll kind of hang out here a little bit. They may even start to roll down a little bit and it may move in a little closer towards this area. And I never think of them as exact numbers, always areas, okay? So there's a pretty wide range when we're looking at the 28,657 for the area because that's, that's pretty big. That's something like maybe 15, 20 points. And we wanna really narrow it down, which is why we use these smaller charts that are in the background. Now, if it decides to push past this area and past this little pivot point, we're gonna be looking back here. Then the next spot we're gonna see if we're gonna breach is right in here. Now, if we breach back below this area that held 
pretty intensely right here, I would expect to see it continue pushing down and using all of these support areas. But if it holds here and pushes back up and the MACDs start to pick up some strength and move to the upside, we're gonna see what happens if we can get back up here and push up higher than this pivot. You know, what it's really telling me and what I'm really looking at here is, yes, we're still trying to make this attempt to the downside. And let me pull that daily chart back up just so we can look at this area again. I mean, just looking at the fact that it's hit these pivots several times and hasn't pushed through it, I'm not gonna try and be the one that pushes through it. I'm gonna wanna see it break through and possibly even work to pull back into it uh, to really be like, okay, now we're on that upward trend and we're on that upward movement. Because that's what we look for a lot is the breakthrough, the pullback. That's how we even come up with these areas of support and resistance. That's how they're created, is we're looking for that breakthrough and that pullback into the area. But currently right now, it's looking like it's making the attempt to pull back, but let's look at what our trading charts have to say. Now, I have chosen the 10946, the 1597, and the 233 as my trading chart. I do have some traders who choose to use the 4181 in this space and the 610 in this space. And it really connects these charts by the EMAs. Uh, the EMAs do connect these charts. And, you know, if we had the 610 up here, you would see these colors connected between the 1597 and the 233. So, uh, having that synergy between them and being able to see those uh, charts flowing together is super important to what we do here. We want to see a agreement between all of them before we really make the decision to take the trade. Now, can it take a little longer for the 10946 to roll over and go in the opposite direction? Absolutely. But we're going to want to pay attention to the strength of what's happening before we really make that decision if we want to go along in the opposite direction of our bigger tick charts. So looking at my 10946, right, we've pulled back into this area. Now, as we pulled back here, the MACDs look like they're attempting to push just a little bit lower. They are still inside of the Bollinger Bands, and you've still got about 3,000 ticks, 4,000 ticks left out of the 10,946. So you still got a decent chunk of that to go through it. And what we would like to see if we're going to anticipate this to pull back even deeper than where it seems to be trying to stop right now, and I say trying because we're not really getting a strong movement up in the MACDs, even though we had this big bar pull back. Now that is, as we know, overnight material. And sometimes, especially in the beginning, we don't necessarily want to trust these big spikes that happen. But what we can see here is we did have a little bit of divergence. We pulled up to the zero line. It's still making an attempt to push down. With the fact that this close looks like it's trying to make its way down below the previous close, we may expect this to pull back just a little bit deeper. And then we're really going to have to pay attention at that point, okay? Because just like we were talking about on the bigger charts where it pulled away from the EMAs, so we made some distance and some separation between the EMAs and the price, it pulled back into it, we pulled up higher here. And when we pulled up higher, we did not have any divergence on the 10,946. So this may just be a little bit of a play to pull it back, still be higher than this pivot and push it up. But if the strength really starts picking up to the downside in these MACDs and we really start seeing it push down, we're going to have to reevaluate when, when or if, I like to say when, if we get to this area, whether it's going to continue pushing past this previous pivot or is it going to hold so this is a lot of what we're doing throughout the day just looking at what is our price what do our price bars tell us about the area what are the closes saying about it what did the emas say about it and what did the strength in the macd say about it to me the macds are the only indicator that we have that work in actual real time with the price and that's because we've created it so that they have the bb so for every price bar that is being developed a bb is developed as well 
And so that BB is gonna move kind of in tune, not kind of in tune, that BB is going to move in tune with what's happening with the price as well. And so when they start to really get out of whack, that's when we have to ask ourselves, what's going on? The MACDs are not currently leading lower like we see in the pivots here. So it's pretty much equaled this previous pivot. It's, it is just a, a tad bit higher. And we do have a little bit of a higher pivot here in the MACDs. Don't know that I trust this W pivot to take off to the upside just yet. As I'm saying, I want to watch this BB and see what happens. We've still got a couple of thousand ticks. Um, I'm not a big overnight trader right as the market starts off. So I like to watch it for a bit, let it work itself out, see what it looks like in the morning and then possibly work with it. Now, some nights we have some movement that's really, really great and it will just flow like wine. But, you know, right now, especially now that we're here really closing up on the end of the year, I'm going to expect it to get slower and slower and slower as time goes by. And let's be real. When it moves really, really slow, most of us struggle because what we do is we start making up in our minds what we think it should be doing because it's just moved still on the same bar, still moving on the same bar. And we've made 500 decisions about what we think the market should be doing because we're not being patient. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. You know, it takes a lot of patience to trade in times like this. Uh, I think that if you are not an experienced trader, you may want to take some time to um, simulate during this. So you want to simulate during this because it is important to learn how to handle the market when it moves very slow. Now, does that mean that you should be just sitting out doing nothing? I mean, yeah, sometimes, but sometimes that means just practice with it. Pay attention to it see how your patience plays out in these kind of movements because they can be a little bit harder to just manage you know you want to move your risk in a lot quicker because you're thinking man this is taking so long is this going to pull back and what happens a lot of times is you move your risk in too quick it comes back tags it and then takes off in the direction and then you are frustrated so we're trying to minimize that frustration a little bit here at responsible day trading by helping you learn to flow with the market. So if you've got questions over anything we do, please reach out to us at inputresponsibledaytrading.com. We would love it if you like and subscribe. We love being able to share this information and having you share it helps as well. So, all right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap that up. I hope that everybody has the most amazing week. And as always, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side.